All right, boys and girls, this is the second video, and we are going to focus on comparing decimals in this video. So please make sure that you have the worksheet that has examples one through six, and we're going to zoom in and get started. So we have here, Ty wrote down a number that is greater than one and six tenths, so greater than one and six tenths, but less than one and 72 hundredths. What is one number that Ty could have written down? So again, what I like to do is think of money. I think of this as like a dollar and 60 cents. And I know that six tenths is the same as 61 hundredths or 60 cents, right? I can add that zero there and it's the same. So it has to be between, so greater than this, so bigger than this, but then less than this amount. So a dollar and 72 cents. So the numbers that he could have written down could have been one and 61 hundredths. 1 in 62 hundredths, 1 in 63, 1 in 64, 1 in 65, 1 in 66, 1 in 67, 1 in 68, 1 in 69, 1 in 70, or 1 in 71. I know that it says to write one number, but just so you guys are aware, if your answer is correct, it could have been any of those numbers. Let's look at example number two. Looks like we have an inequality here. We have to choose the correct symbol. So right here, they've given us a selection. So we have two, and it's just one decimal point after the number, or at one place value after the decimal point. So that's two tenths. Now we know that you could add a zero. You can add a zero after the number and it's still the same. So right, 20 hundredths is still the same. And then this one is two place values past the decimal point. So we need those two zeros. So we're talking about hundredths and that is 29. So now we can compare. Again, if you think of it as money, do you want 20 cents or 29 cents? Well, 29 is the bigger one. So that would be this symbol right here, meaning 20 hundredths is less than 29 hundredths. Let's look at example three. We have to select the correct symbol for each comparison. So we have five and one tenth compared to five and 11 hundredths. Again, you can plug the zero in after and then you know that's still equivalent. So do you want $5.10 or $5.11? You're completing the sentence, so you have to start from left to right. Read it just like you would a sentence. So $5.10 is less than, so you're going to put it in this box right here, $5.11. Now let's look at this one. Well, with this one, you guys probably noticed right away, you can compare the dollar amount or the whole number six and seven. We couldn't compare the whole numbers here because they were both five, so we had to look at the decimal places. But in this one, we know six is less than seven, so that's automatically going to be less than. Moving right along, example number four. So a comparison is shown, we have to choose the number that belongs in the missing box. So <clears throat> we can see here we have $8.45 or 8 and 45 hundredths, correct? And we have to choose a number. So what I like to do is just kind of rewrite this over here to the side and just try plugging in each number. So if I put 8 and 4 tenths, that's equivalent to, I can put the zero there, so 8 and 40, meaning $8.40 or $8.45. Is this true? 40 is less than 45. So I found the correct answer. It's A. Just to make sure, let me try plugging in the second number just to make sure I'm thinking about this correctly. So if I put a 5 here, and again, I can add on the 0 and it still doesn't change the amount. Now I have hundredths comparing to hundredths. Is 50 less than 45? Talking about just our decimal places. 50 less than 45? No. So that's wrong. If I change this to a 6, right here, $8.60 is 60 less than 45? No. And if I change that to a 7, 870 or 8 and 70 hundredths, that's wrong. So yes, I'm right. The correct answer was 4. Number 5. 
Mr. Carter measures two pencils. The first pencil was three and two tenths centimeters. So that's pencil number one. The second pencil was two and seventy five hundredths centimeters. Select all the true comparisons of the pencil lengths. So we have three and two tenths, and we are comparing that to two and seventy five hundredths. Well, if we have hundredths in one place and then tenths in the other, kind of like the fractions when you guys were working with tenths and hundredths, again, we need to add this zero here to create that equivalent fraction or hundredths and hundredths so that we can compare. So let's see here. Well, right away, we can look at the whole numbers, can't we? Three and two. So let's look. We know that this number is greater than, so is three and two tenths less than two and 75? No, because three is bigger than two, so that's wrong. Are they equal? No. I see another one where they're equal. No. Now let's look at this. Three is greater than two? Yes. Let's look at this one. Two is greater than three? No. Two is less than three? Yes. So the two correct answers were C and F. All right, let's look at the very last problem here. The locations of points S and T on the number line represent decimal numbers. Explain why the value of T is greater than the value of S. Well, let's look. S is equal to, now it looks like one-tenth. But I know, because we've said it now a million times, that if I were to imagine that zero there, right, now I have hundredths, it's ten hundredths. S is equal to ten hundredths. And T is equal to thirteen hundredths. Now, I guess this is a way I could compare them using the fractions. Thirteen. 15 hundredths is greater than 10 hundredths. So that's one way that you can explain. For some of you, you automatically relate it back to fractions, so that might be the easiest way for you to explain. Thanks for your flexibility today, guys, and I hope that I will see you tomorrow morning. Thanks for watching these videos. I really appreciate it.